Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. We're still going through the engine tune-up procedure checklist that we developed. Uh, we first retorqued the bolts that have a tendency to uh, come loose over time. We also did a complete tune-up of the valve train, including checking and adjusting the, the camshaft or valve timing by putting the timing chain on different positions of the camshaft sprocket. We went through the camshaft and examined the, all of the lobes and especially how they were getting oiled while the car was in operation. And lastly, we adjusted all of the valve lashes, the intakes and the exhaust. So the next item on the checklist is supposed to be the ignition system, but I, but I actually thought it would be a good idea to skip over to engine health for a second and do a compression test before we go any further. I really have two reasons uh, to pull the compression test forward in our checklist. Number one is that it is the single most important test that you can do, and it'll actually tell you or it can help you decide whether or not you want to continue going through the, um, the tune-up list, or if it's time to consider taking the engine out for a full rebuild or a uh, engine swap. I would liken the compression test to something like a doctor doing a blood pressure test on you, because the compression test, while it is relatively easy and fast to do, it can tell you uh, a whole lot of information about the general health of the engine. So you want to pull the compression test forward, but not before you do the valve train, because a valve timing that's off or a valve lash that's not adjusted correctly can actually uh, impact your compression test readings. And this brings us to the second reason. A compression test can be a nice validation that you adjusted your valve train correctly, especially if you actually did a compression test right before you started messing with the valve train. If you had slightly low readings across all cylinders or even in one particular spot after you did the valve train tune-up, if that has been resolved and that can be verified through higher compression test readings, then you know that you did a really good job on the valve train. On the other hand, if you uh, have low uh, compression readings across all cylinders, then you can try to uh, compensate for that by advancing the valve timing or if you get a particularly low compression test reading on one or two cylinders, you can try to go back and see if you uh, last your valves correctly. So for those reasons, we're gonna skip over to the compression test, but after we do that, we'll come right back to the ignition system and continue going through the checklist in this order. Now, a compression test is relatively straightforward uh, for any experienced auto mechanic, but I know that it can be kind of daunting to do uh, especially if you're doing this for the first time, and I know that it's easy to mess up and get false compression test readings uh, that you'll unnecessarily worry about. So we'll try to go through the steps in detail uh, so that you guys know exactly what to do. So really the only thing that you need is a compression test kit. I actually bought one that's made by OTC uh, from Amazon. But there's not really any need to buy one of these. Almost any local auto parts stores will carry compression test kits that you can borrow for free. Uh, and those will do the trick just fine as long as they're functional. So mine has a whole bunch of different fittings like this uh, so that I can use it on like a lawnmower or a motorcycle. But uh, these specialized fittings aren't really necessary because the L series uses a fairly standard spark plug size. So taking a closer look at the gauge here, you can see that mine reads all the way to 300, which is a little bit unnecessary because the magic number that we're looking for is anything from uh, 150 on the low side to 180 on the high side. So a little bit about the engine that we're testing here. We have an L28 engine uh, because we have a 280Z. The block which hasn't been rebuilt is a N42 block with stock pistons, but the head, which is N47, uh, which is pretty identical to the N42, uh, has been rebuilt. So the compression test uh, reading that I would expect from, let's say, a brand new or rebuilt L28 in this configuration with the stock compression ratio is right about 180. So that's the highest of what I would expect to see from this engine. 150 is kind of on the low side of what would be considered a worn-in engine that is still functioning relatively well. Now, if you see compression readings of lower than 150 across all six cylinders, it might be time to consider um, either rebuilding the entire engine or considering a engine swap because that engine is a little tired and it's not probably producing or capable of producing the, the power that you're expecting to get.
So now that we covered the basics, let's actually go through the steps. The very first thing that you'll actually want to do is start up your car and get your engine to operating temperature. You always want to read the compression readings while the engine is at operating temperature because they, as the engine warms up, the piston rings slightly expand and actually seals the, um, the cylinders a little bit better. So if you, if you measure the compression while the engine is cold, um, then you're probably getting much lower compression readings than you're capable of getting. So we'll start up the car. So when you turn off the car, just go ahead and put in the off position and take out the key because we do not want the fuel pumps and the injectors to be firing while we're cranking the engine. And we're gonna pull all the spark plug wires and set these aside. After disconnecting all the spark plug wires, go ahead and disable the ignition system by disconnecting it at the ignition coil. So we're gonna remove all of the spark plugs so that the engine can crank freely. Even if you're testing compression on only one cylinder, you should go ahead and remove all of the spark plugs. The spark plugs can be a little hot, so be careful. So there are ways to do the compression test without uh, using this remote starter, but I would not recommend it because what this allows me to do is crank the engine from right here without actually having to get inside the car. If I didn't have this, I would have to get inside the car to crank the engine by uh, turning the ignition every time. And also I would have to um, disable the fuel system. To connect the remote starter, first disconnect the positive lead on your starter. It's this plug right here. Just pull that out. Your remote starter should come with two alligator clips. Connect one to the positive battery lead. And go ahead and connect the other clip to the positive side of the starter. And once you've done that, you should be able to crank the engine without having to get inside the car. So find the correct fitting. And we are going to screw this in into uh, cylinder number one. And there's no need to do this with a wrench. Just twist it until you can't twist it anymore. That should be enough to prevent any air leaks. And connect your gauge and make sure that it clicks shut because this is, if it's not connected properly, it's just gonna blow off while you test. Make sure that the gauge is reading zero when you're connected. If it doesn't, just press this button on the side to relieve any pressure buildup. You wanna start at zero. Last thing that you want to do is you want to hold this, uh, you want to hold a throttle valve at wide open. If you don't hold the throttle valve at wide open, your compression test reading is going to be a bit low. Now you want to crank the engine for at least six revolutions. I think some people say at least four, but I like to hold it for at least six or seven because that's where it gets to the highest point. So let's see what happens when I click this button. So I did it for 10 revolutions and that's right at 170. So um, as you go through this, you want to note or write down what compression you're seeing. I'm taking a video, so there's no need for me to do that. But uh, when you're done with each cylinder, jot it down and then move on to the next one. Before you disconnect it, just press this button to release the pressure. Disconnect your gauge and move on to the next one. 
and click. This one reads 175. Release pressure, release gauge, and move on to the next one. You should try to move through this test as quickly as possible so that you're not measuring the different cylinders at different temperatures. This one is at 180. We got another 180. Now I'm most worried about cylinder number five because we actually did a compression test before I started working on the cylinder head and the valve train in general. And this one was the one that was particularly low in compression. So I'm excited to see if that problem has been solved. So this one reads at 170 which is, uh, I'm pretty happy to see that actually. So I think we have 170, 175, 180, 180, and 170. And the last one, we're almost home free. So this one also reads at 170. So um, I, I think we're all good here. We're, everything is between 170 and 180, exactly uh, what we wanted to see. Um, and everything is within range. So um, I, I'm really pretty happy to see these numbers. So at this point, if you have been fortunate enough to get high and consistent compression readings across all cylinders, like I just did, then you're done. But if you're less fortunate and you actually got low compression readings, let's say across all cylinders or even just one or two, what you would want to do is a wet compression test. A wet compression test is pretty much the same thing as what we just did, except before you test each of the cylinders, you scored in maybe a teaspoon of engine oil. What that does is the engine oil actually helps the piston rings seal the bottom of the compression chamber. So if squirting in engine oil actually helps your um, compression test readings by quite a lot, then that means that you have um, worn or damaged piston rings and that's where your issue is. If doing a wet compression test does not help your uh, compression readings or get it into the range that you want it, your issue is probably more at the valves or at the cylinder head. Especially if you see low compression readings in two adjacent cylinders, for example, in three and four, what that probably is pointing towards is a blown head gasket that is allowing the pressure buildup inside a cylinder to pass on to an adjacent cylinder because that, um, that width of the head gasket between the cylinder bores is very, very thin. Now a blown head gasket doesn't necessarily have to be in between two cylinders, but if you suspect a blown head gasket, there's other signs that you should be looking for other than low compression readings. One, if you look inside the compression chamber and you see that one piston top is much cleaner than all the other ones, that is pointing towards coolant leak inside that chamber that is cleaning off the piston top. Second, if you see excessive white smoke in the exhaust, that points towards um, burning of coolant as well. Three and four, you should be looking for oil inside your cooling system and coolant in your engine oil. If you see one or more of these other symptoms, then you probably do have a head gasket leak. Excessive carbon buildup can also impact your compression test readings. All engines have some amount of carbon buildup and it's usually not a huge deal, especially on the top of the pistons because unless it's bad enough to cause pre-ignition pinging, the car should be just fine. 
Now, if the excessive carbon buildup is impacting the ability of the valves to close fully, then you actually have an issue. Now, if you see problems in your compression test that you can't diagnose readily, then it might be time to do a leak down test, which I noted down as optional, because you really only have to do a leak down test if you see a problem in the compression test. I personally haven't yet done a leak down test myself, but the gist of it is, is that you actually use a air compressor to pressurize the compression chamber when the valves are fully closed. That allows you to detect air leaks um, and depending on where you find them, that, is, that can point to your problem. For instance, if you see or if you hear hissing out of your exhaust pipe, then that probably means that the exhaust valve is a problem. So while I'm not going to do a leak down test because my compression test readings were just fine, um, if you're interested in doing that, I would suggest that you look into that if you can't readily uh, identify your problem. Cool, so that was the compression test. On the next episode, we'll start going through the ignition system, starting with the spark plug and the wires. So talk to you guys next time.